What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Car Salon with your boy Amir. And it's going to be another discussion in one of my Benzes because I have to start them, as I say, from time to time to get the fluids going, to get the engine running, to get parts moving. You can't just let them sit. You got to move them forward, move them back. No spots in the tires. No flat marks, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, missed you all. It's been a week. If you haven't considered doing so, please subscribe to the channel. Definitely smash the like button if you like this video and watch it to the end. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be giving very good and knowledgeable information in this video. Key very key factors on things that I want to mention in this video and just a disclaimer this video is for US purposes because I don't know how insurance and you know auto insurance and in other in other countries work or how it exists in other countries but all I'm trying to explain for is in the US currently because I live in the US and I know a few things in New York that what happens or whatnot so the topic of discussion today is getting your car fixed god forbid you get into an accident and a fender bender or whatever the situation someone hits you you get into something you get hit while parked any old bodily damage on your car that needs body shop work or auto body work what i suggest always because i've had horrible stories i mean i can tell you stories sit here for hours and go on and on about how many like dramatic and awful experiences I've had just searching for a decent body shop paint matching good body work perfect repairs actually repairing dents rather than filling up and doing like some bondo job that I hate and I wouldn't recommend to anyone you know so this is the type of stuff that I need in order to choose a body shop of choice and also is there's certain body shops that I will use for insurance purposes and there's certain body shops I will only use if I got to come out of pocket let's say if I'm doing a customization job or something like I did on the W140 that I wouldn't use like a higher end body shop for that only due to the fact that a higher end body shop will charge a higher labor rate which will in the end come out to a higher end result price tag for what you want to get done so when choosing a body shop always refer to friends people that have already used that shop they've had previous work done by them and just they they know from previous experience that hey this guy's or these this business does amazing work and i vouch for them 100 percent or whatever the situation and then second off is that you want to see well you know the thing about reviews and yelp and google reviews is on a person-to-person -person basis so you can't really base it off of that because that's just a person's personal experience that they're describing so overall yeah the reviews sort of speak for itself but at times you also got to remember that it's people's individual experiences adding up and becoming that review or rating or whatever the the shop is being rated at so the issue with that is is that you're taking people's words you know but some person could have a very amazing experience with a certain body shop a certain thing that they did for them and other people can have like a really horrible experience and write some one star random negative review about a, a sh the same shop that a person had a five star review so that's why reviews i can't really take for you know what it is you got to take it with a grain of salt the other thing is that with body shops the most important I would say the two most important things that you need 
to go over and cover in a body shop. And depending on what car you're taking to them, is that are they going to get you OEM parts and fight for you like an attorney would through your insurance? Because insurance gives you LKQ, which is like, kind, and quality. So they can get you a used part from, let's say, a car that's within your same years, which could go across five to seven years, depending on, uh, what is it called? The body style, because some BMWs, Mercedes, the chassis goes seven years before a redesign, and some Japanese, obviously, five years. So with 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 that being said, you want to make sure you're getting new OEM parts that will match up, that will fit perfectly in this car because sometimes aftermarket pieces, they just fit horribly. Body line gaps are disgusting. If you're not really a person that doesn't look at your car like that and you don't really care for it and you just kind of A, B, go here and go there and you don't really look at attention to detail, then these things wouldn't really matter to a person like that. But if someone's very anal, or excuse my language, but like is very, you know, on point and they want to know and they want to see and they very look at, they look at a lot of detail and they take, they nitpick at every little thing, then you definitely don't want to use aftermarket stuff. Excuse me, sorry, I have a runny nose because I just had some pepper in my salad and it's kind of like tickling my nose. I apologize for that but carrying on <laughs> aftermarket pieces tend to cause problems and are problematic down the road because of fitment issues they have to sometimes you know adjust certain things they might have to sand down they might have to grind they're not always exact spec of how these cars are and I don't care what anyone says oh aftermarket pieces are great this and that sometimes in these high end cars aftermarket things tend to cause problems and a lot of the times they do they don't fit right they don't match right they're just a cheap version or I would say like a replica or look alike of something that you want just cause of cost saving money basically or insurance cutting corners and a lot of body shops will, you know, eat the deductible, this and that, depending on how big the deductible is. If you have a thousand dollar deductible, that's a little tough to swallow with a with a body shop. They might end up charging you, let's say, two hundred or a little less than five hundred to kind of, you know, squash things or kind of make things flow. Because a thousand dollar deductible, I gotta admit, like if it's like a seven grand job, let's say, and the check is only cut for six. It's going to be hard to hide a thousand dollars in a in a job. Definitely, if it's a very high end body shop that does amazing and exquisite work, very little bondo, very little body filler, and they repair the actual damage before even putting body filler and sanding it down. Because body filler is not something to play with. Like you could have a dent, and if you fill it with body filler. You, you, a little, like, you could open your door, let's say, and you hit another car while, while parked, and you open your door, you know, in between when you kind of parallel park, or what do you call it, when you're in a parking lot, let's say, at a shopping center or a mall, and you go, and, you know, you open the door, the car's tight next to you, you, you hit it, boom, all of a sudden, you'll see a whole piece of, like, almost plaster falls off your door, and you see that same kind of hole or ding or something, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, that scare you with the whole, uh, bondo jobs and you don't want that the car just looks disgusting it just looks atrocious and you do not want something like that even near your car or being worked on like that because that just is like one of the cheapest and horrible poor quality work that you could possibly get is a bondo job because you could it's like it's just just like filling a car up with plaster and basically smoothing it down to make it even with the other parts of the car so that to me is just horrible and i would never go even after that you know in new york we have this area like but used to be called shea stadium we would call it shea stadium jobs because the mets played at shea stadium and there was a lot of these like kind of mama papa body shops that would 
butcher your car up for the cheapest price possible. You would come out and there'd be like fingerprints on your doors and your paint and like crazy stories. You, you'd one of my friends actually he did a job there one time and he got the car painted and the guy's like, yeah, he's like, okay, yeah, drive around. This is the base coat and come back like in a week and we'll put the clear. You don't mess with shops like that. I don't. I don't care how much money you spend or little money you spend. They gotta put the clear on the car. You can't drive around with base coat and expect there not to be chips and dings and you know there's there's even the little minor little pebble hit your car while driving and the paint on the base coat's gonna chip like what do you think the 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 clear coat is the enamel of your car it's almost like a ceramic coating basically like when you do a ceramic coating on a car that's like the extra protection almost like a film or the expel that will repel pellets or pebbles anything the rocks sand grains you know like you know what do you call it they they always dig up the roads here in new york and the asphalt alone you know you go to spin your tires a little bit and it hits your your body line or your or your 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 side of your doors it starts chipping paint and cracking stuff so you just got to watch out for these things because you got to make sure paint matches because and they do a quality job because in the end you're just gonna wake up every day to that car and it's gonna be like a sore thumb sticking out like oh crap even body gaps body gaps are one of the worst things you can see it's like it's like saying like like one side of your hood could have a gap this big and the other side is so tight because they didn't even out the the lines between each fender and try to center that hood properly let's say or you could have a hood that's lifted up and it's not attached to the front bumper it's like someone with their mouth open all day like this would you like i mean not to make fun of someone but i'm just saying it's like it's gonna it's just gonna be there and it's always gonna be on your mind and you're like what the hell did i pay for or what did my insurance pay for and what a mistake i did by using this body shop and then now you become an advocate or actually like a source for a body shop to advise someone and say, hey, don't go here, man. They do horrible work. They're going to butcher your car. So in picking a body shop, you you got to be very, hopefully you don't, I, I don't wish, I wish everyone drives safe and have, you know, an amazing time with their car, enjoy their cars. And I would never wish an accident or body damage on any vehicle for that matter. But, you know, obviously crap happens and you don't want to deal with a horror show after the fact that you've dealt with something tragic or you've dealt with something that's so you know inconvenient that you inconvenience inconvenience yourself even more by picking a body shop that you never even heard of or someone let's say sees you on the street and it's a body shop and they see the damage on your car and they're like oh hey come to my shop i got you this and that and they sell you this whole dream and then all of a sudden your car comes out and it's got like pigments of blue in it and pink and red and green you know you get you get your your rim sent out to a shop let's say if your rim was damaged they sent it out and they were supposed to you know fix it oem color and it turned out blue or pink or green because you got to also understand that in paint there's pigments that are mixed into paint or shades to kind of make that paint into what it is and if the company or the paint company or the person mixing the actual solution or the formula to make that paint goes even a hair over i'm serious like there, there's so very little room for grammatic error that like almost 0.1 or 0.01 could throw off a whole shade in a car or, or on, in the paint, actually. I've actually spoken to someone who's a really professional paint guy. And while he's mixing the paint, he's explaining to me. Like, you see, he was showing me the computer and saying, yeah, this is how much you have to, like, put up the flakes or the or the clear coat or this is how much paint you got to put in. It actually weighs it. The machine weighs it. So once it reaches that level, it's it, 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 it basically beeps and says, no more, no more. So if you go to you know pour more or by accident you slip you just ruin that whole amount of paint and now 
you're either stuck throwing that out, which most body shops will hell no not do, because first of all, paint for automotive is very expensive. And it's not like paint for your house that you just slap on walls. And even that alone is expensive too, but paint for cars, because some of the paint has to be so fine because it goes through the gun, that these paints alone, like for a gallon, let's say for your car that could only paint maybe let's say half of the car or something, is a thousand dollars for some of these cars. If your car's a three stage paint and has pearls in it or flakes or whatever the situation, three stage paint is even more expensive because there's more, you know, there's more, uh, there's more of a process to doing a three stage paint as opposed to two stage. Two stage is just base and clear coat, but three stage is base, flakes, the metallic or whatever the, the you know the, the pearl is, and clear coat. So now you you're paying more, even though the process is the same spraying method. You it just takes longer because now you got to do more coats. Like let's say if you do five to seven passes on the base coat, you you got to do another let's say two or three or four passes on the on the metallic or the pearl. And then another two or three passes on the uh, clear. Usually, so at times, the pearl is mixed with the clear. But for some reason, I think other shop, like some shops might do it differently. You know, depending on the shop, you never know. Some might put the clear, and then you know, what do you call it? Some might put the pearl, then do the clear after, or some might mix it in with the clear, depending on what the process is. But all in all, you got to realize that paint matching is a very important thing, especially if your whole car is not being painted. Let's say your front end's being painted. Fenders, hood, front bumper. Okay. You also got to realize that your two front doors must be blended. That means that half the door must be sanded down and p painted on that half to blend into the fenders and basically match the fenders, match the front end, the hood and the bumper, and then from the door to the whole front be cleared all together. So only half the doors are painted and then it's cleared all around. So that in all in all is what you want to know and what you must know about body shops and if they do these things because if they cut corners and they just paint it from the fender line or the beginning of the fender and just go forward and they don't do any blending you're literally going to have a apple and orange paint job and I'm telling you it's going to look ridiculous you're going to have a paint job where there is what do you call it sorry about that where there is paint that looks literally almost like, I don't know how to say it. Let's say like, let's say your shirt is black and your pants are dark, like blue. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if you can get that kind of contrast because next to each other, you will exactly see that this paint looks this color and this paint looks that color because this is the original color on the doors, but the fender is new and it'll be a, complete variance. I don't care what anyone says. It will be if nobody blends. Even when they do a back bumper, a bumper alone, if they don't blend into the quarter panels, you will have a car that will look atrocious when that bumper is attached on. It'll look like something that was just slapped on that doesn't even belong to the, to the car because all it is is fresh paint and the older paint is going to look out, look like a sore thumb and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's going to look horrible. It's going to be, even if it's from the best body shop, best paint and work, it doesn't matter if they did amazing. They got to blend. Blending is the key and the secret to making a car actually look all around like it all matches because that blend alone is what throws off almost like an illusion to say, wow, it looks really good now. It doesn't look, you know, there's no variance. Like, you will see a variance 100% no matter what. 
if you have a car and let's say your whole passenger side needs to be painted, you can literally compare it to the rest of the car. And if it's not done properly, it will be a total different shade. It'll just look horrible. You will not be satisfied with the job and you'll just be upset. Like I'm a very picky guy when it comes to these things and I get really upset and furious when it happens. But you know, the crazy thing is that when it does happen, what are you going to do? You're going to say, Hey, do it over. Like the, the job's already done. What's done is done. You're not going to go there and say, Hey, you know, do it over. I don't like this crap. This looks horrible. Nobody has time for that. They're not going to spend an extra, you know, to try to fix it. And then who knows if it comes out, it might be worse than when the first time they gave you. So you just got to deal with it and eat it, I guess, as they say. But anyway, that's the situation with insurance and auto body work. You got to go to a body shop that'll at least, you know, help you out, not take the deductible, do clean work, give you a good job do repairs before filling in the car with bondo or body filler at all first repair the damage then body filler just to smooth out there should be very minimal body filler i don't care what anyone says body filler is not the solution to body repair and that being said most the the top priority is paint and the person painting it and you don't want orange peel, which you can fix still after the fact that it's been painted. But you just want a decent quality of work that if your insurance is paying for, you're going to get back your car the same way it was prior to the accident. Or if it never was an accident, the same way it was prior to it being hit or being damaged. You don't want a car that just makes you feel bad because sometimes cars are a big purchase and, and they honestly make you feel good when driving them depending on what car it is or or just a car in general i remember being a kid and you give me a car i'd be like oh hell yeah I'd, I'd love to drive a car i started driving at 12 years old so i know what it's like to enjoy a car and and, and actually have something that you worked for or earned you know like like when you actually worked hard and and saved money to earn a car, earn something that you purchased in your life, you cherish it, you value it more. That's the reason why when something like that happens, you just don't like the fact that if someone were to work on it, they make it even look worse or whatever the situation. Anyway, that's a little insight for you on body shops and insurance and try to be safe out there, drive carefully, focus on the road, don't text while driving, very dangerous, don't do these crazy things, you know, if you're going to do certain things, think before you do it, because it could cost you more than you think, and just, you don't want the headache, hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, smash the like button, I'd really appreciate it, if you haven't considered doing so already, definitely consider subscribing. I'd appreciate that. I appreciate all of you to all my fans and everyone that follows me on Instagram and YouTube. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for all the support and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.